Hello, how's it going guys? Thank you for watching. For this video, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this 50mm 1.4 lens and how I use it every day when I go and shoot weddings. I plan to make a video on each one of my lenses, especially the ones that I use most often. I start with the 51.4 because I believe that this is the lens that every photographer should start out with. There's a few reasons why I think that. Some of those reasons are related to how I use the lens today, but others just have to do with the progression of photography and how you get better at it. And I think the 51.4 really helps you when you first start out. All right, so first I'm gonna start with the five different ways that I use this lens. And I'm also gonna mention some of the features and uh, why I use the lens in those particular moments. And then once I finish with that, I'll talk about some of the situations where I wouldn't use the 51.4. Okay, so just a little bit about me. I'm a wedding photographer here in Waikiki and a lot of the shoots that I do start out in the hotel room uh, shooting the uh, bride and the groom getting ready. That's pretty much where I get 90% of the use on this lens. And I start with the depth of field. So at 1.4, this is the fastest lens that I have. It also happens to be the cheapest. And that's another reason why uh, most photographers need to start out with this one because it gives you that really high quality professional look with really not a lot of money. And so when I go in to do a makeup session, I'm really trying to get really soft, really intimate shots. And using this lens, not only can I get close to the bride and the groom, but I can also blur out the entire background so that anything that's uh, uh, distracting in the back, like trash cans or maybe even uh, some of the furniture here in Hawaii is really colorful. And so I can pretty much blur all that out. Also, I'm emphasizing the subject. So uh, sometimes I'll do uh, the earring. So I'll, I'll focus on the earring or maybe even just the eyelash as they close their eyes. So a lot of the little uh, fine, uh, kind of beautiful details that uh, brides want to see, they want to remember from their wedding day, I can capture that with this without having a really distracting background. I also like the fact that I can get pretty close to a, a bride and groom without distorting their face, without making their nose look bigger than it actually is. So the 50 does a really good job with that. Uh, shooting really soft portraits with a soft background and uh, without any distortion. And so that's uh, the main reason that I use this lens. Another reason is that when I do these makeup sessions, sometimes they start really early in the morning where the room is still kind of dark or maybe the incandescent yellow light or even the fluorescent green light can kind of clash with the blue light coming in from the window. And so to avoid all that, the first thing that I do when I walk into a hotel room is pretty much turn off all the lights and so that way I'm working uh, only with the light that's coming in from the window but obviously if it's still early in the morning that's not going to be a lot of light so I can open this all the way up and I won't have too much of a problem sometimes when it's still dark then I'll have to use a light or something like that but for the most part if it's not too early I can use this no lights no flash and it gives me a really natural really pretty look most of these hotel rooms tend to be really small so obviously using the 50 is a lot better than using that 70 to 200 it's this big I don't really want to walk around knocking over their stuff or hitting the TV or anything like that so having it a small package like this with the body uh, then it makes it a lot easier for me to move around in that enclosed space. The only lens that I use inside a hotel room that's pretty big is my uh, 24 to 70. And most of the time it's just outside so I can get maybe like an ocean view or diamond head or something that's, you know, I can't fit on the 50. Which actually brings me to the fourth reason or situation where I use this lens. is anytime that I want to get a flat wide angle shot. It's kind of hard to describe. Uh, if I have an example, I'll put it up here. But... Uh, when you shoot a wide angle with the 50, there's a really unique look that you won't get with like a wide angle lens or even with the 7200 that's really compressed. It's almost like a, a, an in-between shot where everything won't get small like it does in a wide angle lens uh, in the middle, uh, but also everything won't get compressed like it does with the 70 to 200. And so what this one does is gives me everything pretty much looking like uh, how you would see things. So again, nothing gets exaggerated. It looks a lot more natural. My wife loves using this lens for that. The only problem with that is that uh, when you have a small area, then you can't really get those shots. So a lot of the times it's gonna have to be outside or if it's indoors, it's gonna have to be a place that has a lot of room to be able to walk back. And the fifth reason or situation where I use this lens is right after golden hour. Sometimes I do use this lens during the sunset where the sun is still come, kind of coming through at a low angle. Immediately after the sunset, you don't really get a pop of colors. You kind of have to wait a little bit longer and then hopefully there's clouds in the sky and that's when you start getting those purples and those blues. And that's when I really like using this one. But I don't do that so often because I really like the compression that you get from the 70 to 200. Uh, so on occasion I use this right after uh, the golden hour. I did forget to mention that from time to time I get a really dark chapel or cathedral 
and where I would prefer the 7200 because I can kind of get close. I don't really have control during the ceremony, so the best thing I can do is just kind of be ready and be able to kind of reach in with the 7200, but sometimes even that one is not fast enough. It doesn't, it doesn't have an aperture wide enough uh, to capture without me getting blurred shots or kind of a lot of noise. And so I'll, from time to time, I use this one in really dark chapels. All right, so those are the five ways that I use this 51.4. So again, just to recap, it's uh, when I want a really shallow depth of field to uh, avoid any distractions in the back. When it's really dark and I want natural lighting for a more natural look. When I don't have a lot of space to work with and I, I don't want the big lenses to just be knocking stuff around. When I want really natural looking wide angle shots and sometimes right after golden hour when I want those purples and those blues in the sky uh, but those are the five now the five reasons or situations where i would not use the 51.4 would be one is when i don't have control of the situation so where i'm not in control of the poses or the lighting or anything like that because what happens is the uh, range of this lens is so limited and the depth of field is so shallow that i can't just swing and try to hope that i get a, a clean shot or even a well composed sharp image and so the 50 doesn't really work well with that. But before I move on, that's actually one of the best reasons why you should start out with the 50 because it trains you on being ready for anything. When I travel, I like taking the 50 because of the size and it's compact and all that. Uh, but I am aware that there's gonna be shots that I won't be able to take. So I'm just gonna have to be able to on the spot react and either recompose the shot, just accept the fact that some of the shots are gonna be out of focus. But uh, I wouldn't want to do that when I'm getting paid to do the job. There's a difference between having the lens uh, to travel and getting your own pictures. But once somebody's paying you to get the best, cleanest pictures, then that's a little bit too risky for me. I, I'd be uncomfortable with that. So I try not to use it when I don't have control of the situation. I also don't use it at 1.4 all the time. There's some times where 1.4 looks really nice, but you have to be really careful that the thing you want in focus is on focus. The depth of field is so shallow that you could easily be aiming for the eye to get be on focus and then the nose is what's on focus. I don't use it at 1.4 unless I have the time to be able to check and double check and triple check that what I want to be on focus is on focus. Sometimes when I have a little bit of time but not so much, then I, I drop it down to 2.0 just to be safe. I don't use it in direct sunlight because I, it defeats the purpose of having such a fast aperture uh, because you would have to either put a filter on there or drop the ISO below what it's um, kind of natural for it. And uh, I just don't like pushing the lens that much. It's, it's nice but I can get the same effect either in the shade or with the 7200. And uh, going back to not only not having control of the situation, but also uh, when I go to a chapel that's really big uh, during the ceremony, I don't wanna be that close to the action. I don't wanna be uh, right there in front of the guests, the mom, the dad, or you know, disturbing the ceremony. Uh, so this lens can only get me so close if it's a small chapel, then I can probably get away with it. But if it's really big and there's a lot of people, then I just rather stick to the 70 to 200 because that gets me close without being intrusive, being in front of everybody. And the last situation where I wouldn't use the 50 is when I try to do macro photography. There's things you can do to the 50 so you can get really close, like adding a macro ring. But one, the aperture doesn't get that small. I think this one goes down to F16. And sometimes if I want really nice details on the rings or even like on the earrings, something like that, uh, then I'd rather just use a macro lens. It's tempting to use a 50 because you don't have to, you know, switch lenses and all that. But in my opinion, you don't really get the best macro photography just because of the distance that you need to be from it. And just the, because the depth of field is just too shallow for macro. If you don't drop the aperture far enough, then you start getting aberrations on the details. And it's just not the best macro photography lens. I do sometimes use when I'm short in time and I don't have the macro lens with me. I, my, I use my 24 to 70, but I crank it down to 70, drop the aperture to about 5.6, sometimes eight, and then very carefully using the LCD, try to get as clean shot as I can. But it just be too much trouble with the 50, so I don't use it for that. Okay, so that's it. Those are the five ways that I use the 51.4 and the five ways that I try to avoid the 51.4. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I have a few more videos on each one of my lenses coming up, so don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when those videos come up. I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.